Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless isaiah 520 woe to those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The First Lady Jill Biden spent International Women's Day giving the Woman of Courage Award to a biological male. Watch. In Argentina, Alba Ruada is a transgender woman who was kicked out of classrooms, barred for sitting for exams, refused job opportunities, subjected to violence, and rejected by her family. But in the face of these challenges, she worked to end violence and discrimination against the LGBTQI plus community in Argentina. This award winner wanted to change the name of the National Women's Conference to the Plurinational Conference of Women and Lesbian, Cross-Dresser, Transgender, Bisexual, <laughs> Intersex, and Non-Binary Persons. I like it better by what its real name is, which is Halloween. Okay, she just won an award for best costume. That's what this is. They are very much co-opting the identity of women. Like, what would be the difference between this person and Rachel Dolezal? We fired Rachel Dolezal for pretending to be black. We said, you can't do that. You're not biologically black. She's not biologically a woman. So on some level, this is a manufactured civil rights movement. We went from women's rights to I'm pretending to be a women's rights. Romans 1, 18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. It's International Women's Day! Hooray! Unfortunately, it no longer means anything. The final victory of feminism is erasing women as an entire category. They don't even exist anymore, literally. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> women getting lectured by men about the pains of menstruation. That's the final victory of feminism. Well, a Minnesota judge called Patrick Diamond has just ruled that USA powerlifting must allow men to compete against women. And as you'd expect, powerlifting groups are now warning this will effectively end competitive powerlifting for women. April, thank you. And I'm sorry to laugh. This is actually a very sad story, and I'm just wondering how you feel about it. Well, uh, thank you for having me, Tucker. Um, uh, how are we feeling? The women of powerlifting are, um, we're outraged, uh, we're angry, we're hurt, we're offended. We're basically uh, every emotion except for happy. I just don't, I know you're not supposed to criticize trans anybody, but here's a guy who's horning into your sport and wrecking it. Like, I don't know why he has to be a hero. That's appalling. Who would do something like that? What's this guy's problem? I don't even know if it's so much uh, the person, right? It's, it's the policy. So yeah. at the end of the day, the policy is allowing him to compete. Um, you know, would I feel good about myself if I was a male taking female records and exactly. podium spots? No. Well, that's it. And, and you're right. Obviously, this is a troubled person, and I don't want to be mean, but, I mean, it's just so awful to do that to you you're brave enough to come on the show. I'm certain you'll be punished for it. So you must really mean it if you're willing to. Do you know any other female powerlifters who support this? Well, that's the thing. If I, if I didn't do anything about it, I mean, there was times where I couldn't sleep at night. I mean, I've been battling this for about two years now. Finally, women are coming out. I get daily emails and messages from women saying, thank you so much for standing up for women in sports. 
uh, a lot of women are silenced and feel silenced and that they have no voice or they're afraid to speak up, fear of maybe getting kicked out of the Federation to be called names, right, uh, for backlash. Uh, but no, we're growing stronger and louder and the amount of support is, is overwhelming, actually. I have to just ask, since you are a woman, having a man lecture you about what it's like to be a female powerlifter, is that empowering for you? No. <laughs> It's, I, I honestly, I, no, it's, it's, it's crazy. And, um, you know, I, I say this every day. I talked to my boyfriend about this and I said, I can't believe we're actually having this debate and this conversation in 2023. There's a reason why there's Title IX. There's a reason why there's male and female divisions in everything. Men are naturally stronger. They get 67% more muscle mass on them. Naturally, they have testosterone, which is a, a uh, muscle inducing uh, chemical that your body releases. You look at any sport, you're going to have the men's lifts are so much further than the women's lifts. The you know, men's world records in, in deadlifts are, are reaching 1,100 pounds. Uh, in the women's division, you know, it, it's very rare to see a 400 pound deadlift. Romans chapter 1 tells us God has revealed to mankind that He is the creator of all things and that he has made it known to mankind that they are without excuse through his creation that he exists. God demands that we worship him and recognize him as the creator. And when a society does not glorify him as God, he gives them up to three phases of judgment. Romans 1 verse 24 says, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart. The second phase of judgment is of the body, verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. First, the heart is rotten, then the body follows, and then the mind goes. The moral law of God written on the heart has literally been stomped out and replaced with cultural immorality. Immorality now goes in every direction. The mind is corrupt. People don't think right. They advocate all the wretched things and depreciate all the virtuous things. And what flows out of this pornographic, homosexual, depraved culture? All evil, verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. In these last days, society has not retained God in their knowledge, and in return, God has given them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. As the U.S. Supreme Court considers student loan debt forgiveness, a Christian college in Missouri is asking the court to hear its case about gender and dorm assignments. If you've ever taken a trip to Branson, Missouri, you've probably heard of College of the Ozarks. It's a small, prestigious Christian institution for higher education nestled in the Ozark Mountains in a place called Point Lookout. Less than 1,500 students are enrolled, but the college receives thousands of applications from those wanting to attend there. That's because the college offers free tuition. But unlike many students pushing for debt forgiveness, these students work for their tuition. You work uh, for 40 hours a week for 12 weeks, and that pays for your room and board for the fall and the spring semester. I've worked at the laundry. I've worked at the warehouse. I've worked at the Keter Center. I've worked in the construction department. I've done it intentionally to get the well-rounded work education. It's incredibly important, I think, to our country to graduate people who understand that being debt free is a good thing and that debt is bad. And if you want something, you work for it. What a concept. Work hard and your debt is forgiven. This college emphasizes character and patriotism and, of course, Christian values. Back in 2021, President Biden signed an executive order barring gender discrimination. So the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, applied gender identity to the 1968 Fair Housing Act. As a result, the federal government is now trying to force the College of the Ozarks to open its bathrooms, showers, and dorm rooms to whatever gender someone thinks they are at the time. A biological male could room and shower with a female co-ed if he identifies as a female.
CFO says that it is discrimination against them. They're a religious institution. It would force the college to abandon its biblical principles and its faithful commitment to God regarding sex and marriage. The Eighth Circuit Court ruled against the college, and that's why the school wants the Supreme Court to take up the case. Folks, this violates the U.S. Constitution and the right of freedom of religion. Let me remind you of Article 1 of the Bill of Rights, which says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That means the government cannot impose another faith, in this case, woke secular humanist religion, on the school. It also applies to President Biden and HUD. They cannot force a college to violate Christian principles, its beliefs about sex and gender, or anything else, because to do so would impose another belief system, in actuality, a government-conceived religion on the institution. The Supreme Court must take up this case. Religious institutions must be excluded from this HUD rule. It is of utmost importance to American society to restate our guaranteed commitment to the First Amendment and religious freedom. If the government erodes the right of citizens to freely adopt and practice their own religious beliefs without religious freedom, the country is no longer free. And the democracy that the president and many politicians continually warn us is under threat will cease to exist. Verse 32 brings Romans chapter one to an end with a very bleak view of human nature. The point of the last half of the verse is to show that many people not only do things that they know deserve death, but also entice others to do them and approve when they do. In other words, the end point of depravity is not just a love affair with sin, but the desire to bring others with you to destruction. It's not just that people choose death for themselves in the passion of sin, but that they become suicidal at the spiritual level and assist others in eternal self-destruction by approving their sin. We are watching this play out right before our very eyes. Simply stated, there is no such thing as transgender. You're either XX or XY. That's it. God made man male and female. That is determined genetically. That is physiology. That is science. That is reality. This notion that you are something other than your biology is a cultural construct intended as an assault on God. The only way you can address it honestly is to say, God made you, and God made you exactly the way He wanted you to be. You're not only fighting God in His physical creation, you are even more importantly fighting God in His sovereignty. You are fighting God in His spiritual relationship to you. Th this is a war on God. I'm not going to let God tell me who I am. I'm not going to let God define me. I'm going to be my own God. I'm going to define myself. And you're in, a, you're in Romans 1, and that's a reprobate mind. That's a mind that doesn't even function. So while saying that with firmness so you understand it, I think this has to be dealt with with love and compassion because there's some, some holes in the heart of someone going in that direction. There, there's a, a lack of being loved and accepted and feeling wanted and needed and significant. So on the one hand, the reality of that lie and deception is so damaging, so destructive, so isolating, so corrupting that it needs to be confronted. But on the other hand, that confrontation can't exaggerate what already exists, which is a sense of feeling isolated in relationships. So you've got to find the fine line between confronting the error of it to protect the person and at the same time providing the love and affirmation that that person needs to be all that God would have that person be. Jesus said, as a sign of His coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, 
The pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. We're going to begin with breaking news overnight from the war in Ukraine, where the Russian military has launched a deadly barrage of missiles across the country. Ukraine's president says these missiles hit energy centers and residential buildings and killed at least six people. This is the most serious missile and drone attack to target cities across Ukraine in nearly a month. But as you can see here in Dnipro, people really trying to get back to life as quickly as they can. But in Bakhmut, Russian-backed forces say they've managed to push forward in that embattled city. In a blistering assault, a battery of Russian missiles and drones struck several major cities. Little was spared and lives lost as millions more were plunged into the cold and dark. It doesn't make sense to me how this can happen in the 21st century, this resident says. It's like we're being attacked by wild people, just savages. All winter, the Kremlin has ruthlessly been targeting Ukraine's infrastructure in missile and drone attacks. But it's in Bakhmut, where the fighting remains the most intense. The head of the Russian mercenary group Wagner is claiming his fighters have captured key urban areas after seven grinding months of running street battles. As the Kremlin continues to desperately pursue its first major territorial gain in over half a year. In Chasivyar, only a few miles away, we met Badia, who just returned from the front. It's tough, he says, really hard. There are losses, but we can't win without that. <laughs> losses felt no more acutely than at the funeral of 29-year-old medic Yama Riklitska, who was killed treating injured soldiers in a field hospital outside Bakhmut. Her mother cries in anguish. Oh, Yana, my baby, my little one. As she says her final goodbye. Romans 13, 11, And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The closer we draw to the second coming of Christ, the more urgent it is that we awake out of spiritual sleep. We have entered the end times, and with it, the grand climax of human civilization, culminating in the return of Jesus Christ. If ever there was a time to pay attention and get prepared, it is now. Furthermore, none of us knows when he or she will die. Being spiritually prepared for the end of life should be our top priority. Jesus emphasized the importance of watching for his return as we read in Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Watching means properly using our mind. God gave us the ability to study, learn, observe, analyze, judge, and think. It is our God-ordained responsibility to watch and pray for Jesus' return. Ignorance comes from ignoring, and God does not want us to be ignorant to the season of the Lord's return, as we read in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-11. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. We need to know the Bible prophecies of the end time, especially the prophecies surrounding the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Jesus was emphatic that his followers should hope for his return expect his return, and pray for his return. Syria's Aleppo International Airport has been struck by unidentified aircraft overnight in an attack which the Damascus regime attributed to Israel. According to the Syrian Defense Ministry, the aerial strike occurred shortly after 2 a.m. overnight when aircraft appeared from the direction of the Mediterranean Sea 
west of Latakia, where Russia maintains its Air Force base of operations in the country. A Syrian military source who was quoted by the regime-run Sana News Agency noted that the strike on the Aleppo International Airport caused substantive material damage and effectively rendered the airstrip out of service. As a result, the Syrian Transportation Ministry announced that it diverted all air traffic to Latakia and Damascus. It is important to know that while the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm or deny its alleged responsibility, in recent weeks, Israeli intelligence figures signaled to Iran that unless it would stop transferring weapons under the guise of humanitarian aid to the quake-stricken regions of northern Syria, Israel would be forced to act. Meanwhile, according to an intelligence source who spoke to TV7 on condition of anonymity, the Islamic Republic continued to use its civilian aircraft to smuggle weaponry into Syria. One day soon, we will get out of bed, turn on the morning news, and the broadcast will go something like this. Israel has launched an all-out attack on Damascus, Syria. It has ceased from being a city and is a ruinous heap. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17.9 In that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow, and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. We have an alarming story to start the show. A hostile foreign power in control of one of the most popular apps in America. The dangers of TikTok, an app found on millions of phones across the nation, dominated a Senate hearing on global security. TikTok is owned by the Chinese company ByteDance, and the concern is that China's government could gain access to user data and send a steady stream of disinformation aimed at dividing Americans against each other. One thing gaining bipartisan support in Washington right now, banning the incredibly popular Chinese-owned app called TikTok. In a hearing before the Senate Intelligence Committee, Top security officials testified as to why Chinese apps and software pose a growing national security threat. This is not about TikTok. This is about any app, any electronics that are coming from China. FBI Director Christopher Wray says TikTok screams out with national security concerns, explaining he believes the Chinese government could use it to drive narratives and divide Americans against each other. Could they use TikTok to control data on millions of users? Uh, yes. Could they use it to control the software on millions of devices given the opportunity to do so? Yes. Author Gordon Chang spoke with CBN News's Faith Nation about the growing tension between the U.S. and China and why he believes a war is coming to American soil. We have a lot of Chinese-made devices in our country, like the drones. And then, if all of that weren't bad enough, we have these big cranes, um, port cranes, that are meant to be connected to China so China can troubleshoot them, which means that they can then manipulate them and steal data. China can do what's obvious, and that is, in the first moments of a war, manipulate our infrastructure, take it down, the grid, water, all the rest of it. This week, the White House announced they support a bipartisan bill that would give the president the power to ban foreign-based technologies like TikTok, which currently has over 100 million American users. Luke, 2125. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days, right before the return of Jesus Christ, is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Parts of France came to a standstill as workers staged their biggest nationwide strike of the year so far, a year that is far from over. Yesterday, more than a million people took part in demonstrations against a proposed government plan to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64. The protests were largely peaceful, but there were clashes with riot police in some cities. <laughs> More than a million people marched in towns and cities across France to say no to President Macron's reforms that will see them working longer and retiring later. The atmosphere at the Paris march ranged from lighthearted 
too aggressive. There were some violent clashes in Paris on the sidelines of the marches with what police called radical elements that had nothing to do with the protest. Rallying outside parliament for a second night in a row. Protesters in Tbilisi have been marching against a so-called foreign agents bill that many fear will curtail civil liberties and stifle press freedom. But riot police pushed them back using tear gas, water cannon and stun grenades. The transparency of foreign funding bill passed a first reading in parliament on Tuesday, but not without chaos and fighting between MPs. The bill requires NGOs and media outlets receiving more than 20% of their funding from abroad to register as foreign agents or face heavy fines. President Salome Zurabashvili has come out in support of protesters and has vowed to veto the bill. Many demonstrators say the bill is reminiscent of Russian legislation used to silence critics. They say should the bill become law, it will ruin Georgia's chances of becoming a member of the European Union and NATO. To Greece now, where another day of fiery protests continue, thousands called for accountability and improved safety standards following a train wreck that killed 57 people last week. A demonstration in Athens turned violent when a group hurled Molotov cocktails at police. Officials there responded saying that using tear gas rather and stun grenades. Greek youth, no strangers to showdowns with police, had reason to be angry. It was mainly young people going back to university who were killed on February 28th when a passenger train collided with a freight train. The government blamed it on human error. And it's the young who grew up in a recession after the post-2008 global financial crisis. The New Democracy Conservatives came to power in 2019, promising prosperity. But the COVID-19 pandemic and now high inflation because of the Ukraine war have largely sunk their agenda. Hundreds gather at a funeral march for the six Palestinians killed in an Israeli raid that lasted several hours. Israel says one of them was wanted for killing two Israelis from an illegal settlement near Hawara over a week ago. Israeli troops used shoulder-fired missiles to destroy a house where they say the 49-year-old suspect had barricaded himself in. Our brave troops operated surgically in the heart of the murderer's den. As I say again and again, whoever hurts us, his blood is on his hands. Palestinian officials say this latest raid amounts to Israeli declaration of war against the Palestinians. The international community has been calling for a de-escalation for weeks, but the reality on the ground is far from it. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay. Moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth 
can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.